All right, this video is going to be about ions. We are going to start off with just a quick recap of valence electrons. I know I introduced those briefly to you earlier in the unit, but valence electrons are the electrons that are located on the outermost shell of an atom. And so what that means is we determine the number of valence electrons based upon whichever group or column it is in. Now, the interesting thing about that is we pretty much ignore all of these in the middle. So this right here, and I would label this on your periodic table, this is column one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in our final column. Now, these are the columns that I just labeled. Those groups are the ones that we care about in terms of the number of valence electrons. So aluminum will have three valence electrons. Helium will have eight valence, well, that's a bad example. Helium's an exception. Neon will have eight valence electrons. Argon will have eight valence electrons. And so we determine that by that group number I just wrote in there. Remember, we're just kind of ignoring those right there in terms of valence electrons. Now, every single atom, all of these over here want eight electrons on their outer shell. Because if you have eight electrons on your outer shell, and then they're going to be happy, you're going to be peaceful, you're going to love life. So all of these, helium, beryllium, boron, carbon, they all strive to get eight valence electrons. And there's actually a way they can do that, and that's through ionization, through becoming an ion. An ion, just to recap that definition you got earlier, is an atom that contains a different number of protons and electrons, resulting in a positive or negative charge. So that means an atom, instead of like we have previously done, when I said the number of protons equals the number of electrons, like carbon, it has six protons, therefore it has six electrons. If the number of electrons changes, the atom itself stays the same. It just becomes charged. So, for example, if an atom has 22 electrons and 20 protons, its charge will be 2 minus. Because remember, electrons are negatively charged. Protons are positively charged. So if there's more electrons and protons, there's going to be a net negative charge. Um, if an atom has 23 electrons and 20 protons, now it's a difference of 3 with more electrons, therefore its charge will be 3 minus. You just got to see what the difference is, and if electrons are more, then it's going to be negative. If protons are more, then it's going to be positive. If an atom has 18 electrons and 20 protons, now it has two more protons, which are positively charged, a little plus sign right there, therefore its charge will be 2 plus. If an atom has 17 electrons and 20 protons, again, these are positively charged, these are negatively charged, so it's got three more positive than negative, so its charge will be three plus. Um, now there's two different types of ions. There's cations and anions. A cation always has more protons than electrons, and it's gonna be positively charged. An anion is always going to be negatively charged and um, is a result of having more electrons than protons. Uh, this is an example of what isotopic notation would look like for an ion. We still have our mass number on top, our atomic number on bottom, but if it's an ion, we add a charge right here. So this would be calcium 2 plus. Now calcium 2 plus, if there's a 2 plus right here, that means it has two more protons than it does electrons. So that means it lost two electrons because the number of protons never changes. So calcium will always have 20 protons, and usually it will have 20 electrons, but if its charge is two plus, that means it must have two more protons than electrons, so that means it must only have 18 electrons to result in that two plus charge. Why do ions gain or lose electrons? Well, we briefly talked about this in the intro, but every single atom wants to have a full outer shell of electrons. And a full outer shell means eight total electrons on the outer shell. Now, not, it's not so easy to get, because remember, you have to fill the inner shells before you can move to the outer shell. So it's not super easy. Um, the way they do this is they give away or they gain extra electrons. So if we look at this here, chlorine would like to gain an electron because it has seven valence electrons and if it could gain one as shown here now it's going to have eight and it can gain one by something like sodium giving away an electron so sodium will give one away to chlorine chlorine's happy because it has eight and sodium as soon as sodium gives away that electron 
You see how now its outer energy level is empty? That means you can just erase and get rid of that outer energy level. And we see what it results in over here. Now it has eight on its outer energy level. So chlorine took one from sodium, allowed sodium to get rid of that outer energy level. Now sodium has eight on its second energy level, which is now its outer one. And chlorine has eight on its final energy level. So everybody's happy with eight valence electrons. So that is why and how ions exist because electrons trade. Sometimes they take away, sometimes they add. Now if we look at our periodic table over here, these elements will always be cations. And this element, this falls in there too, this category three, they will always be cations, meaning their charge will always be three plus. This charge will always be two plus and this charge will always be one plus when it becomes an ion. Over here, these right here, these are all going to be anion, I shouldn't include that, sorry, scrap that one. These right here, five, six, and seven, will always be anions, they will always be negative. Um, this one right here, its charge for this column will always be three minus, that is supposed to be a three, this will be two minus, and this will be one minus. And we'll get more into detail, but I would label those charges, especially on this side where it can get a little confusing because it's got five uh, valence electrons, but its charge will be three minus, two minus, and one minus. They all want to get here to be happy with eight valence electrons. So that's what we saw happen there. Um, the periodic table shows which elements gain or lose electrons in order to be happy. We just went through that. The charges, this is one plus, and I would label these on your periodic table as well. These will always be two plus. These will always be three plus, and then it reverses. We skip this column because they can be plus or minus. Nitrogen's column here, group, will be three minus. Sorry, that's a poor three and a poor minus. Oxygen will be two minus, and fluorine's group will be one minus, and they're all trying to get here with eight valence electrons because all of these have eight. So that's how we know how many electrons they will lose or gain is by their group number. Uh, and one quick additional thing, ions in the electromagnetic spectrum, anytime an ion gains or loses an electron, it gives off light. And when it gives off light, it's either going to give off light with a long wavelength and a low frequency, or a short wavelength and a very, very high frequency. So you just want to take down this. We'll talk about this in detail in class, but just take down the electromagnetic spectrum and then the relationships here. If frequency increases, this would be high frequency over here. This is high frequency. As frequency increases, you can see wavelength decreases, whereas over here, as frequency decreases, wavelength increases. Um, so it's an inverse relationship. And then energy is the same as frequency. As frequency increases, energy increases. And that just occurs. Ions give off light whenever they move from one energy level to another. Electrons give off light whenever they move from one energy level to another. We'll talk more about the electromagnetic spectrum. That was a really brief intro to it, but just wanted to include that so you knew that that was paired with ions. Um, but ions, there's the charges right there. We all want to have eight valence electrons, and that'll make everybody happy. Good luck and farewell.